the S and P 500 and the Nasdaq 100. That's what we're jumping into right now. Now today, the spy did something pretty incredible in my opinion. Now we see this massive level here at 574.7. That's been the pretty big line in the sand overall. Looking here, we're then 573. Now we never came back down to 565, but like I mentioned before, ES was holding its support pretty clearly. You go around to the daily chart, you can see. And I mentioned yesterday it wasn't the greatest reaction on the four hour, two hour. But I will say you made up for lost time today as you look here, that clear support right there, bouncing right back through it, getting back above July highs as well. But what I was saying about SPY is you started closing the day back above this level. And I mentioned on Twitter as well that it looks like you're attempting to mount this level. That's the biggest thing now in the 15 minute really starting to mount that 574.7 and it's looking like it wants to go for a retest and fill that gap up to 579. Now, obviously you have your election still going on. It's up in the air. I don't know what to believe when I look at who's leading. We'll see tonight when the polls really get released. But right now, I think the market is favoring a Trump victory as we speak. So in theory, if Kamala does come out, Kamala, whatever you want to call her, wins, we could we see some downside potential? I, I don't want to jump to the conclusion. I just I want I want today and tomorrow to be over with so we can have clear direction. Okay, I want to be that I want to be that clear right now. But I'll keep you updated with my levels and everything in between. If we're bullish, I'm looking for a gap fill easily, okay? And I would say you will continue the uptrend if Trump is leading in the morning. Why? Because I believe the market is pricing in his victory right now. I also want to highlight, I was wrong. So on investing.com, it was showing that the FOMC meeting was on Wednesday. It is on Thursday. It's usually on Wednesday. It's always on Wednesdays, but obviously the day after the election, they moved it to Thursday. So again, just let you know, 2 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. Make sure you're ready for that as well. So that's the big things that we're looking at right now and what we're going to be going into specifically over the next 24 hours, 48 hours, give or take. Now, obviously, too, I was really worried with QQQ. I talked about potentially you could break down here, but I've pretty I've been kind of vocal. I just didn't expect a breakout. And again, I was wrong on that as well. So again, we saw we were in that little illiquid zone, right? making lower highs, but today we broke out, pushing back in the top of that zone near 493. This is good overall action. You go into NASDAQ, look what's happening here. You break back into your range, back into up 20,037 right now. So again, I mean, as this all continues, if Trump still is leading going into tonight, I have to assume that you're pushing back to the top of the range and you're 20,500. I mean, that's just how you look going into this right now, okay? Again, I think if you're trading right now, if you're holding some overnight, you're, you're taking a big gamble, you're taking a big risk. There's a lot of volatility there, but understand that that's where we're at right now, okay? So that's the biggest points as we're looking at the market. Now, quickly, let's go into the dollar and yields. The dollar continues to show some weakness. Again, what's happening here? This is good. This is what you want to see. And again, what's happening this week? Rate cuts are coming. But what we want to see is those rate cuts to come out, a 0.25, whatever it may be, and continuation on the dollar to the downside. The same thing with yields, the 30-year, the 10-year. We want to see yields weaken, weaken, weaken. That is what we need to see over the next month and a month and a half, two months, okay? Yields in the dollar to weaken, okay? That's the biggest thing right now. If those weaken, you will see the market get more and more love, and that's really what we're looking for right now. The other part of this too, SMH, semiconductors. We talked about that coming down to 239. I was off by a hair. I was off by like 70 cents. They're pushing back up right now, trying to fill that gap back into 249. Semiconductors are looking better. You broke that downtrend or the trend, the uptrend and broke down, trying to bounce. When you get back above 250, start pushing back into 256. XLK tech as well. In the after hours, you're gapping above 227. It's our level we're watching here, a little midpoint there. We get above 227.4. You look really good to gap fill back into 229, 230, possibly back into 232 for the big breakout as well, back in all-time highs. So what we're seeing is good. Like you're seeing the market again. Like this, this was surprising that we saw this type of action, in my opinion, before the election kind of came through. Now, you're seeing the odds favor, like I said, the odds continue to favor Trump. You know, the polling got pretty tight. Now it's spread back out. So again, what we're looking at there. So when we're looking at this, as of right now, if this stands, Trump is the victor tomorrow. I, I think we're looking at a potential all-time high push pretty aggressively. I do anticipate a dip after that, pretty shortly after that, going to the end of November. We'll see. Uh, but what I will say is the, right now, the market is absolutely loving this going into the rate cut decision as well. So that's the biggest things right now. Now, stock-wise, 
I'm not gonna lie. I'm not. I'm really not analyzing too many stocks here. I didn't know trading. I was the only trade I mentioned is the one I've been talking to you guys about. Is if uh, Meta could break back down, it just didn't break down, so I didn't take a trade on the day there at all, right? Uh, but again, I'm being pretty patient here, waiting for this dust to settle to get more aggressive in the market. But a few things I'm looking at right now: Nvidia back above 139.6. I think this is pretty amazing. You're really looking for the the mount above 140.7. At that point, I think you're bullish back into 143 and 141.8, possibly even higher. AVGO held up again near those lows down there, got above 173. Now you're pushing back up. I think this is one of the more undervalued names out in the market right now. Um, if you look at this chart as well, um, let me tell you. Now, we did say if you broke below 166, it looked terrible. And I still agree. If you get below 166, hold my beer. This thing's going to get destroyed. But as we speak, I mean, I'm just telling you, this thing is looking stout. If you can actually get the breakup here, the market starts to rally once again. You get back above 177. I mean, this thing's most likely running back into 185. It looks like a monster. The deal they signed with Microsoft, they're in a very good position. So again, if things go well, AVG is one of the names you got to be watching, okay? Google, also holding up above 168.5, that level we kept talking about. You hold this level, I think you look good. Amazon, I'm going over my favorite names right now, so let's keep, uh, I, that's what you're going to see right now. Again, Amazon holding that 195 level we talked about, you dipped. I'm kind of astonished by the bounce that you got today, to be totally honest. What a beautiful bounce. I mentioned it earlier in Discord, didn't trade it, but man, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful setup. I mean, all things go well. If you're looking for the break of 201 and price discovery, I mean, this probably runs to 206, maybe 208. It's going to really get some, I think if it breaks over all-time highs and runs, you're going to get a lot, a lot of traction here. And this thing could run, I think it runs closer to 210, to be totally honest, something similar like what Apple did. Speaking of Apple, still looks relatively weak, but it's getting back above some of these levels, trying to get back above 224. That's what you really want to see here on Apple is getting back in this range of 224, 225. You get back above that, you're cooking back into 230. Be careful though. Still watching it. It's okay. Um, definitely. Uh, I don't love what they're, they're doing right now. Now, the last thing I do want to talk to you guys about, remember we have some earnings today, SMCI. I'm I'm looking forward to that earnings so so bad. I can't, can't wait. I have no idea what these guys are going to say. I really don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm dying to know. I'm pretty sure they're a filing company, but we'll see. Um, but again, you have ARM tomorrow, which is, I'm extremely excited for ARM, QCOM. Those are big, um, smaller mid cap names in the chip space, but still very big names. I will say they're not small caps at all, but keep an eye on those. Elf, uh, Celsius, you have a, still some mid caps, a, a, a firm, um, Square. We have a lot of names coming in here as well. So make sure you're paying attention to those as well. Because although Trump's getting elected, potentially, right? You still got some very nice small cap hope there. And again, like I mentioned on IWM, as long as you're making these higher lows still, you look good. Now, if IWM falls and breaks below 214, it's a short into the 200 SMA. But you're pushing back into 225, 226. Against all odds right now, the market is looking like it wants to rally. Like it looks like it wants to go insane. So this is definitely what you want to see right now if you're a bull. I'm, not, I'm a little taken back right now, but again, this is why I always say when we're going into these volatile moments, the best thing to do is take a step back, let the action happen, and then get aggressive once you know the stance of the market and how the market is interpreting that data, right? And that's what you have to do right now. So I'm very happy with what's happening here. If we're going to get that continuation, I think there's a lot of very big opportunities. I'm excited about these pullbacks. You know, still names like Micron we talked a lot about. I mean, above 111, it's a long, in my opinion, still. So there's still a lot of these big names out there that we're still very excited about. A lot of upside potential that I think you have to be keeping an eye on. So again, I recommend, you know, being a little bit patient over the next 24 hours. But again, you have a lot of big opportunities coming in very, very soon. I'll see you tomorrow, shorter video. Sorry, guys. Uh, make sure you're following on Twitter for updates. I'll have you guys posted as much as possible. I've been sick the past few days, so I just haven't been able to post as much. Um, I'm still feeling pretty terrible, but I'll be getting back to normal. So again, follow there for more content. I'll see you tomorrow.